What is up, Fight Fans? This is Dr. Jared Vasquez, your favorite ringside physician, coming at you directly in the middle of the week. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, here's how we're gonna divide the videos now. We're gonna post the first three to four minutes of the video here on YouTube because we appreciate you guys, your engagement, the new subscribers, the likes, and all that good stuff that's happening. So we're gonna keep putting content in here uh, on YouTube, but in the descriptions, we're gonna put the link to the full video, which is gonna be posted in rockfin.com, which is a brand new creator-centered platform. Ben Askren is in there, Jordan Burroughs is in there, Chell Sonnen, the bad guy from Westland, Oregon, is there, Adam Hunter from MMA Roasted. It's also uh, Easy, Easy Styles, John Jones, wrestling coach is in there, he has some master classes. The list of creators keeps growing and the, the divide of the profits is better for creators over there, less censorship. Don't be the last one to change over to Rockfin. Uh, but of course, we're gonna keep you fed here in YouTube as well. We're gonna give you content as well. Enough of that, go to Rockfin, make your account. If you wanna do the premium, go for the premium or just do the, the free account. Okay, enough of that. Today we have to talk about uh, definitely some sad news. Uh, in the world of boxing, uh, boxer Maxim Dadashev uh, passed away uh, from the lesions uh, incurred with his fight with uh, Matias Subriel. Subriel Matias, um, that was uh, three or four days ago. Um, Dadashev was receiving a lot of damage, a lot of strikes. Uh, his trainer, uh, Buddy McGirt, uh, was able to convince Dadashev to stop the fight. Uh, and, uh, and get seen by the doctor. Uh, moments later, he was seen um, collapsing outside of the ring. Um, you know, he went to the hospital, was put in a medically induced coma. He had, a, of course, a brain bleed. Uh, and uh, Tuesday morning, uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, from all these uh, injuries. Uh, all too familiar uh, feeling for me. Um, it's near and dear close to my heart because I had the opportunity uh, to intervene in a similar case. So let's go back to 2017, to June of 2017, when Daniel Twitch Franco, a young promising fighter fighting for Rock Nation promotions, uh, faced Jose Aro, uh, um, an equally amazing uh, boxer. I was uh, in the uh, Winna Vegas Casino uh, in Sioux City in Iowa. I was one, uh, one of the main doctors of the Iowa Athletic Commission. So I was always, anytime somebody um, threw a pair of gloves, I was there in Iowa. So I had the blessing to, to get tons of experience down there. The Iowa, the Iowa Athletic Commission, a fantastic commission. Uh, so Daniel Trish Franco, uh, it was a great fight back and forth. I believe it was stopped around the eighth, the eighth, uh, seventh or eighth round. Uh, and um, you know, you'll see, I'll put the visuals up here in the video. Uh, and uh, there was a particular moment uh, which I'm gonna pull up right now, where uh, Dan Franco, uh, there were two doctors at the moment. I was the doctor for Jose uh, Ara, who was the, the, the victor, the, the winner of the fight, uh, who uh, TKO'd um, uh, Daniel Franco. Uh, I, it was a quick check for him because of course he didn't incur a lot of damage. Uh, you go in there, you check his pupils. He was celebrating, he was happy. I go in there, I go out. Uh, the other doctors checking uh, Daniel Twitch Frank on the floor, but I see uh, a specific moment that thank, thank God I found a video tape on on what happened at the moment. So he's uh, uh, Dan uh, Dan Franco. Uh, he's sitting on a stool and he looks at the camera. He points to his head. Let's go ahead and see it in the video. Uh, he's pointing to his head for uh, complaining of an intense headache. That right there was the first clue for me to intervene and go and help the doctor that was seeing him. Uh, of course, it, uh, it's subdural hematoma is the problem, is the anatomical defect that's happening here, but the headache was a symptom that led me to the diagnosis, that led to the prompt treatment of Dan Franco and a good outcome uh, of the fighter, thank God. So all the stars lined up. So just what is a subdural hematoma. And before we get into the subdural hematoma, I wanna uh, give a shout out to Daniel Twitch Franco. What a warrior, I mean, this guy has been going through surgery, through surgery, replacement of uh, the skull flap. Uh, he has gone through a lot of uh, procedures and he's holding on strong. Uh, he was a speaker uh, in, the, in the All Boxes Commission uh, meeting uh, here in Florida. 
So he's one of the um, he's one of the the lucky um, the positive stories uh, post a severe traumatic brain injury in boxing and brain bleeds. Uh, so I definitely know that he's going to be a spokesperson and he's going to be um, an, an integral, an important part, an important cog in the machinery uh, moving forward, uh, having more awareness of this uh, of these type of uh, this type of injuries. I'm super proud that I was part of the team that helped recognize uh, the symptoms and ship them to the hospital ASAP. We, we didn't even get him out of the ring. We went, we, we had uh, paramedic staff come in. Uh, we were able to stabilize him, get him, get him the correct meds, get him some steroids. Um, I believe uh, they didn't have any uh, hypertonic saline, which is a medication that is used, but we get him some steroids and we shipped them quickly and the neurosurgeon was there at hand. So it was, it was everything kind of lined up so it, it was good, it was good. So I'm super happy about that outcome. Shout out to uh, Dan Franco, uh, you the man. Uh, and Franco Sr. too, um, who's a warrior as well, man. Well, he's, he's been uh, looking after his son uh, in a great manner and being super outspoken about all this, all these type of injuries, which, which are really important and we need to, to have more awareness uh, and more education on. So onto what, what, what did Dadashev in, what Maxim Dadashev a subdural hematoma. If we want to know exactly what a subdural hematoma is, we, we have to know uh, the meninges, right? So the think about the skull. Let's pull up a picture just of the skull and the brain in there. Is it floating around in there in the ethereal space inside of the head? Think of a think of a, a fighter with a big head. Let's chill son. Let it be our example. Ooh, a picture of Chill right there. He's a fellow Rockfin creator. So the brain is in there, uh, in the head. Is it floating? No, there's membranes surrounding it. So there are three membranes, the pia, the arachnoid, and the dura, from inside to outside that cover the brain. Almost think of it as a, like, uh, as a sleeve that's covering the brain. So it's multiple layers of these membranes that are covering the brain. Now, what is this function uh, of these membranes? Well, one is reabsorption of cerebrospinal fluid and distribution of fluid inside uh, of the brain cavity. There's dural sinuses. Cavities within um, these uh, these membranes. So it's an active part. So it's, it's an active organ. It's an active structure that helps the dynamic flow of fluid uh, circulation and almost a hydraulics uh, of the brain. What happens when you have a severe traumatic brain injury? A punch. Let's pull up an animation. So when you are punching a fighter that's dehydrated, that uh, the brain is with inflammation, um, there's shearing forces on a specific structure. It's called the bridging veins. It's veins that arise from the arachnoid and go up into the dural sinus. So it's mainly, think of um, a sewage system. So it's part of that movement of fluid inside the brain. Now, shearing forces from a coup contra coup injury, like a punch accelerating and decelerating your head can break those veins, specifically if you're cutting weight and you're dehydrated, there's tenting of these veins and they stretch. And when they're stretched out and they shear, you get a bleed, you get a bleed. So blood starts to accumulate uh, inside, within uh, the internal part of the dura. That's what it's called a subdural hematoma and there is pressure in the brain. And we all know the brain does not work well when there is a foreign pressure, a foreign object, so to speak, growing inside the brain, which is this hematoma. It's pressing on key structures in the brain, creating different deficits. That's why you can see fighters complain of a headache that increase intracranial pressure. Um, you can see changes in the pupils uh, from the nerves being compressed. You can see eyelids going down, that's called ptosis. You can see 